Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studios in Atlanta, it's time for Gwinnett Business Radio, spotlighting and highlighting business leaders in our area. And hello again, everybody, and welcome to a little thing that we call Gwinnett Business Radio. Uh, we are broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studios. My name is Mike Salmon. At least that's what my mom and dad told me many, many years ago. And the man across from the table from me deserves, actually deserves, needs no introduction. Oh. So we'll just move on and let me tell you who the guests are today. Joining us on the pro... Oh, do you actually want me to introduce you? I, I could do that. I, You know what, Mike? It's your ship. I'm just along for the ride. Riding your coattails, my that friend. That is Steven Julian. <laughs> I would not want to be remiss and well, not, of course, introduce you, even though you don't need an introduction. That's true. Welcome back after your one-week hiatus of having fun in Florida. I did. It was great. You got to hit against Oil Can Boyd, which we'll I hear did. that story off the air. That's really cool. Yes. Yes. Well and, done. Uh, a, lot of, a couple other former professional players. Uh, right there you there. go. Do a little name dropping. Yes. I'll do that after the after show. After the show. Uh, but I want to do some name dropping for some of our guests today. Now that's a great idea. There you go. Uh, joining us on the program from Robin Reese Productions, we are joined by Robin Reese. I bet. Uh, ding yeah, ding ding I, ding. I think it's me. Okay, <laughs> well done. I think I'm here. And we'll, if if you are, we'll be talking to you in just a few seconds. <laughs> um, Marjorie Dykes from the 1818 Club is with us as well, and also joining us on the show from M Squared Asset Services. Don Maxwell and Lonnie Allen. We're going to start the uh, program though with Robin Reese from Robin Reese Productions. Good morning, Robin. Good morning. How are you? Good. Robin, tell us all about your company. What do you What do you do? Well, I do uh, commercial voiceovers. I do on hold message services. I do just about anything that involves audio. I um, have a background that involves recording non professional voices. So if you would like something on your website, something that um, you know any any kind of audio. I would uh, be more than happy to accommodate you. How did you get into this business? Many years ago, well, okay, l just a couple years ago. Uh, t <laughs> well, okay, anyway, um, this was... Um, Let's uh, get the story straight Somewhere now. between a couple years ago and many years ago. <laughs> okay, I'll just, we'll just stay away from the particulars on that. But uh, I majored in English and, and journalism in uh, school, went on to broadcasting school, and got my first job in Charlotte, North Carolina, at a small AM station. And we were, we were over a, a really great restaurant, Staley Steakhouse, and I've never worked at a better spelling radio station since then. <laughs> we got hungry all the time. But um, anyway, so that was uh, the first gig, and since that, I've, since that time, I've been in radio and, and worn many hats, as you know, you do in radio, so you, you just fill in and do uh, whatever is required. In fact, before we go any further, Stephen, with your permission, let's play a little bit of what Robin does so you can kind of get a feel. Love it. Let's do uh, it. It's actually very impressive. She's beautiful, perfect, and we only want the perfect baby food. That's why we only use Gerber. The new Droid Razor. Slim, sleek, powerful, 4G fast. Droid. Droid does. With the new All or Nothing game, you win when you match all of your numbers or none of them. It's a win-win, like finding out your hotel room has a hot tub. That's full of chocolate. Thursday nights are mine. She's I bad. curl up with a glass of wine, a little scandalous television, and Godiva white chocolate vanilla bean bar. Knowledge brings us answers. KPMG has been analyzing data for many years in many forms. If you only knew what you knew, imagine what you could do. Our house is always so cold. So there you go, a little bit of what Robin does. Uh, by the way, Stephen... You've just been replaced by Rob. <laughs> that I, was uh, that's fine. All of a sudden, I want to shave, play the lottery, and and get some data. That was produced by Deborah Richards. Um, she's uh, been a voice a, a voice powerhouse in Atlanta for some time, and she did a, a really good job, I think, with uh, with what I gave her. <laughs> now I understand you've had some unusual job interviews when it comes to radio. Well, the first job interview that I had was there was a guy named, a pr program director named, um, I'll call him Bob Green. That's not his real name. And I was a very impressionable kid out of college, and he took me into his studio. It was a country music station, so it had that vibe. There were lots of, you know, country music posters on the on the walls. And he proceeded to take out a small, dirty glass out of uh, uh, as his desk and asked me if I wanted a drink. He got a bottle of scotch or something out. And I was so impressed with that. I thought, I think I want to be in this business. I didn't take a drink. Just okay. for the record. That is unusual. <laughs> Not normal. That's no. for sure. Robin, um, one quick question. Uh, you obviously you work on d 
do websites, you do all different kinds of productions. Are you normally hired through the person producing, the person creating the website, or or is this something where a small business owner in Gwinnett County needs to you know keep your information on hand in case you know do they normally hire you? How's how's that process normally work? Well, I'm I'm freelancing, so I'm open to speaking with the owner and we um anyone really you know now if whatever I, they need. Yeah, so if I'm a small business owner, the very first thing that probably pops into my head is I need some voice work done on my website. I think that's probably the first thing. Or on hold, like you said. What What are some of the other, what's the spectrum of, of voice work that you've done in, in the business industry? In the business industry, well, of course, I've done many um, commercials. I've done a lot of uh, voiceovers for uh, commercials and industrials. They call them industrials that you, you know, you'll have uh, business information on a, a uh, on a website. Mm-hmm. And then I also have done some um, audiobooks. I've produced mainly children's audiobooks. And I've done um, a lot of voice on hold, message on hold. So, you know, just about, and voice prompts for the city of Gainesville, which when I call and complain about my water bill, I hear me and it's annoying. <laughs> so. You know, I always wanted to be the voice on the train at Hartsfield uh, Jackson Airport. <laughs> Um, when I first heard it, I thought it was, and it had like a Southern accent and I was like, that's kind of cool. That is so cool. Th- that was always something when I was growing up, I was like, I'd like to be that voice. Yeah, we would. We're, <laughs> we're talking with Robin Reese with, uh, Robin Reese Productions. You've also done traffic reports. I do traffic every day for Sirius Atlanta and Sirius Orlando. And then I do some reports for Birmingham and then a station from Rome, Georgia. And uh, sometimes you'll hear me, well, every Sunday you'll hear me on WSB. Well, take us behind the, the curtain then, because how does that work? I mean, you're only in one place, yet you're doing traffic reports for several markets. These wires, they stretch everywhere. No, I'm sorry. There's this wonderful thing called the inter- thing say, internet, wasn't? Mike. You should look into it. <laughs> I understand I, that. I'm going to jump on with you, Robin. It's okay. Keep going. It's all right. I work, in a, I work, I, I work for iHeartMedia, and they contract to different radio stations if they need traffic reports. So it's like that. Okay. Well, I get okay. So I'll I'll ask the technical question about it. Is it that they just give you a script? Here's what you need to read, and then they update the script every 15 minutes, or oh, we have to take we we take uh, the information from uh, various uh, spots on the computer, and we're looking okay. at maps, and we're looking at information that's been input by the producers or or ourselves. We call um we call the pro- uh, police departments. We call. So, so it's not just simply reading. You, you there's there's stuff to be done. Yes, to there's a right. little bit of brain work involved, yeah. unfortunately. And these wonderful <laughs> cords that stretch, like she said. Yes. Why is everybody picking on me all of a sudden? What have I done? All of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, right. And apparently it's your week. Next week will be my week. But I think we, 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 we rotate on and off. Has there ever been a commercial that you've voiced over, Robin, that was uh, just, just, I don't know if I can do that, or a real challenge, or you're, you know, yes. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Yes, and um, this is, everybody has heard the voice of a small child, perhaps when they called someone, and the mom or the grandmom thought it'd be a really great idea to put this little child's voice on the message, you know, the outgoing message, and you call this, these call, you call this phone number, and you're like, I don't have any idea what I just heard. And so it's it's really cute. It's just it's just a warning. We we think our children and grandchildren are adorable, but if you can't see this little sweet face, it kind of sounds like you know Martian noise sometimes. Gotcha, gotcha. And and these days with technology, we talked about the wires and the internet and all that. But I mean, <laughs> I assume you do all all this out of out of your home these days. I know a lot of folks in the business and they can work out of their homes. Yes, I've got a home studio, and uh, I would be more than happy to come to someone's business. Uh, I can you know, bring portable equipment. How does Robin Reese find new business? How do you get the new clients? Well, you go to Gwinnett Radio and you say, Mike. <laughs> no, I, uh, it's, Mike, it's, put me on the radio. It's just, uh, it's just a, a networking thing, and it's uh, an internet thing, and I have a website, robinreeseproductions.com. Where do you hope to be maybe three, four, five years from now? I mean, wh- how, bi- how big do you want to get? I have uh, in sight a project that I'm, I really don't, it, this is in the uh, very small, young stage, but I'd like to branch out into doing personal biographies in an audio format because everybody's got a story to tell. Everybody would like to write a book, but they don't have enough time, so this is a small audio glimpse into their life. Great, great. All right, well, Robin, appreciate you joining us this morning. Is there if for folks that want to reach out to you, maybe businesses that want to use some voiceover work uh, from you, uh, best place where they can find more of these examples of what you've done and uh, get all your contact information? Website, RobinReeseProductions.com. And that's, uh, make sure people understand, it's Reese with a C, R-E-E-C-E. Yes. RobinReeseProductions.com. 
Robin, continued success. We appreciate it very much. Thank you so much, Mike. And whenever we need voice work done, we know who we're going to call. And apparently I'm fired. <laughs> Again. <laughs> oh, he's so much better looking. Though. I'll let him finish the show, though. <laughs> You sure? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Actually, uh, and I, in fact, I'll tell you what. You're going to talk about Subaru, aren't you? I, I am. Let's, I was wondering if Robin wanted to read it. Robin, why don't you read our Subaru read? Okay, I would be glad yeah, to. Do you want to take a quick second just to glance it over and uh, see if there's any words there that might stump you? Let's see. I, I don't think so. I think it's, it's not the smoothest to read sometimes. <laughs> what? Okay, here we go. Okay, okay, all right, okay here okay. you go. Shh. Love. It's what makes a Subaru. Grit, get base. <laughs> Um, that's that's where you cut the uh, okay. Get big savings and enjoy our hassle-free experience. Subaru of Gwinnett, where people sell cars. Visit SubaruofGwinnett.com and join our family today. Come in and see the difference. Already a Subaruist? Then follow Subaru of Gwinnett Facebook page for the latest Subaru offers, news, and community events. Stephen, you're fired. Yeah. Do you hear the sound of the door? I'm leaving. <laughs> that was great. Don't oh. let the door hit you on the way out, right? <laughs> All right, Robin. Thank you very much. That was thank a lot you. of fun. All right, and, and he made the uh, job a little easier for Stephen as well. Or harder, depending Stephen, on the, how you look at it. The, I'll give you the address for the check you can mail. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Maybe, maybe after the show you can give him a couple pointers. <laughs> no, no, no. All right. Uh, our next guest here on the uh, Gwinnett Business Radio program from the 1818 Club. I was there last night, as a matter of fact. Uh, Marjorie Dykes. Marjorie is the sales manager. Good morning, Marjorie. Good morning, Mike. We won't make you read anything this morning, so the pressure is off. Oh, that's good. <laughs> but uh, a lot of business people that are probably listening that do business in Gwinnett may be familiar with the 1818 Club, but uh, give us an overview. What is the 1818 Club? Um, the 1818 Club is a private business and social club located on the top floor of the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce building. We have about 800 uh, business professionals and leaders here in Gwinnett, Gwinnett County. Uh, private dining room, bar and grill, which is where I saw you last night. Yes. Having a good time with some of the other Always. members and guests. Uh, we also have private meeting room space and a grand ballroom as well. Give us a little history of, of the club. Well, the when the chamber building was moved to the complex where the Gwinnett Arena and Convention Center are located, Back in 1999, originally it was just going to be a two-story building, and some of the movers and shakers in Gwinnett decided they wanted to have a private business club. Not really a recreational club, but a place to do business. So they put up the capital for the club, and here we are. Now, one of the big uh, little easy questions to answer is, because I've, I've heard this many times, uh, the 1818 Club is not a part of the chamber. It's just on the top of the chamber building, correct? That's exactly right. We're kind of an extension of the chamber, but membership in the chamber is totally separate than membership at the club. But because they're both in the same building, talk a little bit about the great relationship that the 1818 Club has had with the chamber over the years. Yes. Well, we, as I said, are very closely affiliated with the chamber, being on the top floor. And also we have a lot of the chamber events at our facility. And I would say a lot of the chamber members are members of the club. It's just a nice crossover. We give them uh, people who are doing business at the chamber building, and we give them the opportunity to come up to the third floor and continue conversation, entertain clients, and have meetings there. It, it's, a, it's a great um, thing that kind of sets the chamber apart from a lot of other chambers around the country. Not many chambers have at their building this fantastic facility on top and have such a great relationship for such a long time. Um, the other thing uh, that's interesting is um, some of the meeting rooms. I I've been to many events, both in the Grand Ballroom and then in some of the smaller rooms, and also a place where uh, it is social, but you can also go. I I've known business owners who say, I just kind of you know use my 1818 Club membership to just go and do work. I mean, it, you don't, you have some places for some privacy as well. Is that, I mean, you see business owners kind of, yeah, they do their lunch appointment, but then they stay and use the Wi-Fi and do the work for a while. Is that, you see that a lot? That's exactly correct. We have meeting room space that will accommodate six up to 60. And then uh, a lot of people will sit back in the bar and grill and work on their laptops and meet with clients. And we try to, it's an elegant, but casual uh, business club. And you have all the audio-visual equipment needed if people want to make presentations, have you know larger meetings there as well, which is all included as part of the membership. That's correct. We offer complimentary meeting room space outside of the food and beverage expenses that the clients incur. Audio-visual, dance floor, wet bars, we have it all uh, there on property. 
Uh, Stephen mentioned uh, the Gwinnett Chamber. You're in the same building. Uh, you recently, is this a new video? You sent me one this week, a, a, a four-minute video of the 1818 Club. It was, is this a new video you guys uh, just put out? It's fairly new. Uh, we were very excited to have one of our members put that together for us, and we've kind of been using it to promo the club. So, And Dr. Kaufman, who is the president of the Gwinnett Chamber, is, is in that video, and uh, here's his comment uh, on that video of the 1818 Club. Uh, we wanted to have uh, a place where the business community of Gwinnett could do business, have a private uh, commerce club uh, sort of away from the mainstream where we could really uh, get to know each other and, and help businesses grow. And so the Gwinnett business community does business in the 1818 Club. And I don't think there's any question about that. You can go up there pretty much any time, and you're seeing a lot of Gwinnett business people up there doing business or relaxing or, or eating or so forth. Mike, how many times have you been asked by business owners, are you a member of the club? And and that follow-up is you got to be. There's so much business that gets done at the club. I know I've been asked Wish I had a dollar for every time I've been asked that. And the food's not too bad either, is it? No, it's very good. We have one of the top chefs in the area, and our food prices are comparable, really, to Chili's. We are nonprofit member-owned, so we're able to keep our membership dues very practical and also our food expenses. And, yes, we've been working on Mike for quite some time for membership, so I'm going to put him on spot on air. <laughs> No excuses. You, you can send me the check later, and then I think I'm going to have to use that check to pay Robin. <laughs> so we got some business going yeah, on here. Yeah, we do. We all, all right, need to uh, work together on this. Now I see what's going on here. Um, let's get down, a couple things real quick. Uh, voted best uh, power lunch and uh, meeting place for by Gwinnett Magazine. So a lot of other accolades as well, Marjorie. But uh, let's get to the nuts and bolts. Membership cost. I know a lot of folks are going, okay, this sounds really, really, really expensive. But that's not the case. Uh, very practical. Our membership dues are $95 a month, and right now the initiation fee is waived when they first started the club, and uh, there was a $2,500 initiation fee, and that is waived. There's a one-time processing fee of $250 and a quarterly food and beverage minimum of $60. So it's very practical. We are probably the most practical business club in town. So so, so I'm, I'm the one who's a little... Um, I guess I'll say anal about it and trying to figure out all the numbers. I, I think finances all the time. So $95 is the membership per month. And then there's a quarterly $60, which means you just got to go in there and eat a few times. It's not like 60 plus whatever the food costs. That's like, just make sure you're spending at least $60 a quarter uh, or more in, in coming to the club. Is that That's the exactly breakdown correct. Of it? And then the meeting room is is complimentary as long as you pay for whatever food you want in that meeting room when you're holding meetings. Right. As, as long as you dine, the, the meeting room space, the AV equipment, flip charts, anything we have on property is available for our members. And one of the other questions that a business owner might ask to try and, you know, find anything wrong with this deal, because so far I can't find one. Um, do you find that you guys are full a lot where you have to turn people away? No, there's no meeting room space available on that day. Or is it you guys have a good enough space, and yeah, most every time we can accommodate anybody's needs. Well, Laura Watson is our director of sales, and she has been in the event industry for a very long time, and it's really amazing the way that she accommodates all of our members. So she works very closely with them, and she really is amazing in the way that she's able to put it all together. You gave such an amazing answer to those questions. I think now we can ask that question back on Mike, right, that you were asking. Yeah, what so, are you waiting for? So there we for? go. Yeah, what are you waiting for? <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. There you go. Okay. And Steven's going to split it with me, so uh, we're going to hey, go in it works. together. It works. It yeah, there, works. There, I had to actually uh, come to your studio to make it happen. I'll negotiate the split. 5% me, 95% you. I love it. I'm in. There we go. See <laughs> so how right. you do that? All right. Deal. We're in. Um how many members do you have, and, and who, who's a good candidate to, to be a member? We currently have over 750 members, and we have, from the independent financial planner all the way up to the big wigs at NCR, Pepsi Bottling Company, uh, we cater really to the business community in Gwinnett. So we, anybody that's kind of doing business, in this area within about a 20 mile radius of the club is a perfect candidate for the club. Somebody's listening right now, Marjorie, and they're, 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 they're on the fence. They're not sure. It's like, sounds pretty good, but you know, I've never been there before. What, what would you say to them? 
I would say you're missing out. It's the best kept secret in Gwinnett. It really is. And we have, there's a lot of business that is done there. A lot of friendships are made. We do have happy hour every Tuesday through Friday, half price drinks, and then on Wednesday night, like you came last night, yep. complimentary hors d'oeuvres. And sometimes we'll have 100 people in that room just talking, sharing, and getting to know each other on a more personal level. Marjorie just wants to make her money back and all the food that I've been eating there during the happy hours. That's, that's <laughs> it exactly. For those that would like to find out more, uh, where can they go to get all this great information and maybe uh, talk to you or, or your uh, director of sales? Certainly. Uh, my number is 678-474-4492. They can also go on our website at the1818club.org. And I'd be glad to treat anyone to complimentary dining, give them a tour. Just give me a call, and I would it would be my pleasure. All right. Well, you'll be seeing more of us, I guess. Apparently, we're going to be eating there a lot more often, Stephen, it, now. It's on, it's on the record now. You're committed, so awesome. <laughs> Mike's He's thrilled good. with this. And, <laughs> well, I was going to say, if you have me join the membership, too, she's going to lose money on the happy hour hors d'oeuvres. I mean, you know that, right? We're going in together. We're, That's right. And we do everything together. We're partners. That's right. Partners in crime. Marjorie Dykes from the 1818 Club. Always a pleasure. Great to see you, as usual. Thank and, you. And uh, look forward to seeing you again. And thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Mike, right. before we have our third studio guest, I believe you're going to have uh, a recording of uh, some people you met at Speed Pro Imaging of Marietta. And did you know, Mike, that Speed Pro Imaging in Marietta helps businesses stand out by providing high-quality large graphics? If you can imagine it, they can make it. As the industry leader for large-scale printing, they deliver impactful images that share a message, attract attention, and reinforce your brand. To find out more, visit SpeedProMarietta.com or... Let's listen to what they were saying. Well, recently, and we appreciate our, our partnership with uh, Speed Pro Imaging of Marietta, recently they had an open house. Lenise Williams, she runs the Business Radio X studio in Cobb County, and she was there talking to some of the, uh, the guests and the uh, customers of Speed Pro Imaging, and one of them is Joe Wilder, a young man with Joe Wilder Motorsports. An interesting uh, story, and here's that interview with Lenise Williams and Joe Wilder. Hi, this is Lenise Williams with Business Radio X, and I'm here with 16-year-old Joe Wilder, and he is excited to let you all know about his awesome, amazing, super daredevil business. Can you tell us a little bit about it, Joe? Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, I drive NASCAR late models for Mopar Mafia and Joe Wilder Motorsports, and we go all over the southeast and all over the United States racing and competing in the up upper levels of NASCAR, trying to hopefully make it to NASCAR this year. That is amazing. So I hear you have someone sponsoring you, right? Yes, ma'am. Speed Pro is sponsoring the car. Speed Pro Imaging is sponsoring the car. And they do all of our wraps, and it's great having them on board with us. That is amazing. So I understand you've been doing this since you were, what, six years old? Yes, ma'am. It's, it's been a lifelong uh, journey here. Uh, so hopefully we can make it happen in the next couple of years, hopefully get NASCAR on the top level of sports. So how do you handle all that with school? Uh, I'm normally homeschooled, and this is the first year, actually, since fourth grade. I've been into a five-day-a-week school. We're, we're trying to work it into racing, and i just got to balance all my time, and i got to have a week-by-week -week plan. So. so it's pretty incredible that you can drive 150 miles per hour before you're even able to get a driver's license, right? Yes, ma'am. It's A lot of people don't know how I can do it, and uh, the people ask, like, how is that possible? And it's just so many people put it into place and have these series that – young kids can actually go out and do stuff that they're not normally able to do. And how do you train for something like this? Uh, my dad trained me and practiced, especially like ba basketball and football for us. We just have pe our parents normally teach us, and now that uh, I have a driving coach actually, just for me to teach me how to drive better on the racetrack and keep calm and do all my, my missions right and just do everything right. So I bet you're probably the safest driver. You're probably the safest 16-year-old on the road, I'm sure. I couldn't really say that, but we get a little uh, road rage uh, about people uh, not going at red lights and uh, <laughs> instead always texting and driving. and So it, it, it has its advantages. Well, that's awesome. It was so great meeting you. Nice meeting you, ma'am. And good luck to you. We hope to see you um, in NASCAR soon. Yes, ma'am, hopefully. <laughs> 
All right, thank you, Lanice Williams with our Cobb Business Radio X studio, and thanks to Joe Wilder with Joe Wilder Motorsports, and thanks to uh, Liddy Brown and Karen Brown and all our friends over there at Speed Pro Imaging of Marietta. All right, uh, back to our guests here in the studio, and joining us now, a couple of gentlemen from M Squared Asset Services, uh, Don Maxwell and Lonnie Allen. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. Good to have you here in the studio. Okay, M Squared Asset Services, I've got to ask the question, what does your company do? Well, our company uh, work with nonprofits throughout the United States. What we do is basically offer funding for them to be able to buy uh, non-performing notes or um, uh, foreclosed properties. And then we also manage those for them. So not, you help, do you work exclusively with nonprofits? Yes, exclusively with nonprofits. And the, when you talk about non-performing notes, is that exclusively with real estate? Yes, exclusively with real estate. We've got some exclusives, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> is this unique? I mean, are there other companies out there that do this type of work? No, there isn't. And uh, the reason why is we basically did it for banks. We manage uh, assets for banks, but we saw that the nonprofit industry was wanting to be utilized by the banks because it was more of a what they call a, what they call it money uh, contribution where they can donate properties at a discount to the banks and get a tax credit on it. Now, now Lonnie's not assisting you much there. He didn't help you right there at all. I know, I know. he not left a, me hanging. Yeah, <laughs> he, jumped, he jumped right in and asked his own question. Now, now, Johnny, does he do that a lot? I'm assuming that's kind of what he. Well, well you saw Lonnie, it for yourself firsthand, right? Well, Lonnie and I work like y'all. Like you, like you guys, we just don't have a radio for. Yeah, I don't want to ask. I don't want to ask them to unpack that. We'll go to the next question, Mike. Quickly. Well, well tell us, you know, about your backgrounds, uh, Don. We've talked before. You've played in the National Football League, so tell us about your background and how you ended up where you are today. Well, yes, I did play in the NFL. I played for the Houston Oilers. Uh, of course, many people know that at that time, I think I star person was Earl Campbell. I wasn't a star. I just came in when they needed me. Now, what'd you play? I played middle linebacker for them. And then, uh, you know, one of the things I thought about was uh, when I left the NFL, what would be a good career? And it was either technology or real estate. So we ended up getting into the real estate business. And I ended up working for a company called Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae for about 20 years. Heard of them? Lonnie, your background? Oh, wow. Uh, My background is probably not as extensive as Don's, but uh, my background is basically corporate sales. I worked for a small company in Atlanta called Coca-Cola. I was a business. Wait, who are they? (laughs) A little small company called Coca-Cola North America. Uh, I was part of their business development team. I handled national accounts like uh, Subway um, and uh, a couple other national accounts. Uh, But Don and I actually met. Uh, years ago when Don was at Fannie Mae and Coca-Cola did downsize. And Don was like, Lonnie, well, what do you want to do? I said, I don't know. He said, you should get into real estate. So I got into the mortgage business. And lo and behold, 15 years later, Don and I are working together with M Squared. Now, from what you guys said at the very beginning of the interview, um, Don, this is this is – something that not a lot of or any other companies are doing so sometimes when you're in that space most of your time is spent kind of telling people no no here's it really this is what we're doing Um, how do you educate and who are you looking to educate who needs to know about what m squared can do is it mostly the banks that need to know because they're holding the properties that you guys can help with well, it's a combination. It's the banks. It's the nonprofit with their social uh, needs. Uh, they also, I don't know if you've been keeping up with donations from the federal government, but that's gone down. So we help primarily nonprofits gain money by selling these real estate properties or notes. And so educating the banks, the mortgage companies, anybody that own asset that they want to get to the nonprofits. But then we also have to train the nonprofits because their role is to do credit counseling, home buyer education for consumers so that these properties can be sold. So, and, and, and maybe Lonnie, being uh, the, the sales background, maybe you should take this question, but, but 
can you walk us through in a couple minutes kind of the process from start to finish from getting the property from the bank to getting it to the nonprofit to getting it to the consumer? I mean, what, what does that look like? Well, basically what M Squared has done is we've put together a turnkey system. So from acquisition to disposition. So most of the time, is most nonprofits, they're only able to acquire maybe one or two properties every quarter because due to lack of funding. What we're able to do is give them the ability to have scale. Now they can go in and buy 100 properties because with the turnkey system, we have the technology in place that can monitor and track every property that's acquired from either the uh, uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or some of the larger institutions, the banks, or whatever, and then give them that process. We manage the entire process for them in terms of the uh, uh, not just the acquisition portion of it, but the, the rehab portion of it, all the way through the disposition, working with the, uh, the real estate agents, the lenders. So with an, any nonprofit, we give them a turnkey solution. So it doesn't matter if it's a major nonprofit or a, a nonprofit who's just starting out and we're trying to grow their mission. We're able to help them with that turnkey solution. We're talking with Lonnie Allen and Don Maxwell with M Squared Asset Services here on Gwinnett Business Radio. Do the nonprofits seek you out? Do they find you, or do you go out looking for them? And if so, what are you looking for in a nonprofit? That's a good question, Mike. Um, they really don't know we exist, a lot of nonprofits. So we depend on people like Fannie Mae, who has a 1,000 nonprofits in a database. Freddie Mac might have the same number. Bank of America, Chase, all those guys. And then from there, the word starts spreading because we're like money. <laughs> what, well, what about the, 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 the for-profit company in the corner going, hey, wait, what about me? I mean, is there an opportunity for, or is it just completely nonprofits? Completely nonprofits because more for-profits are being supported already by hedge funds. So they already have a venue and a process. Nonprofits don't. Is there a cost? Well, there is no cost initially, but once the property closed, there's a percentage split on the net proceeds at closing. So the nonprofit have to come up with no money at all during the whole process. And I'm sure that split is covered before. I mean, it's not like you're going to be surprised with it. What do you mean it's this percent? I've, that's all covered in the front end. Yeah, we do an agreement with the nonprofit. Here was I wanted to ask a variation question on Mike's about what type of nonprofit are there. Is there a group of nonprofits that aren't really involved in real estate that should be that that would think because they're thinking, oh, we can't get into that. We're just trying to keep our heads above water with the other things we're doing. Are there types of nonprofits that you guys would say, boy, I'd love for them to just listen to us because we could really help them? Well, that's a very good question. You're pretty sharp. Dude. Thank you. I think you should keep your job. Man. Oh, thank you. All right. <laughs> this I'm sending is, you a check, too. This has been one of the most. Marjorie, we've got to make another sale because i got to send another check. Oh, this sorry. has been one of the most unique shows we've ever had. I love it. Okay, but but let's let lot, him answer that. A lot out. of power plays going on today. <laughs> <laughs> Business being done. Go ahead. Well, you know, typically the main thing we need from a nonprofit is for them to have the ability to deal with the consumer. But we know that there's a lot of nonprofits that, for one, aren't in real estate, and they don't deal with the, the buying consumer. So what we, what we will do is work with nonprofits that don't have any experience in that area because we have a national company that's based here in Atlanta, matter of fact, that has about 400 employees that will, that will white label that service for them, put it in their name, and actually do the work on their behalf, and then we can manage the real estate. So for organizations that are nonprofit, that want to raise funds, that want to play in the real estate game, we can open that door for them. Yes. This may be a strange question, Don and Lonnie, but for the – for-profit businesses out there, and that's a lot. And a lot of our listening audience are business leaders, business owners. If they wanted to help somehow these nonprofits, is there a way they could be involved somehow? Oh yes, I mean they. Of course, the nonprofit is a charitable contribution environment, and they can have a write-off by being involved and contributing. Uh, one of the other things that we do that's huge, and uh, we did it in Detroit recently at uh, halftime of the uh, Pistons basketball game was that several for-profit groups 
donated money for a home giveaway to a veteran. And uh, Chase, matter of fact, put up the house, and several uh, prof- for-profit businesses came and painted the house and did repairs, and and they gave a, we gave the house away at halftime through one of our nonprofits. And, of course, the lady was elated. She's a single parent with two teenage uh, sons. And, and uh, the interesting thing about it is her commute to work was an hour and 45 minutes. Right, Lonnie? Correct. Uh, with this house, it dropped down to 45 minutes. So I think she started rolling on the floor of the midcourt just for that excitement. And then, and then another thing happened. Uh, Farmers Insurance gave her one year insurance policy at wow. no cost. Wow. So she has a mortgage-free home. So we want to take that across the country also. So that's something we can deal with for profit organizations to participate in. And you mentioned the Pistons in Detroit, a home game there. So, you, so you're not bound by ge- geography. You can go anywhere. We can go nationwide. That, that's great. I was going to ask you, you know, what you love most about what you guys do. But, I mean, that story yeah. right there, I mean, that's, that makes it all worthwhile. Repeating it is what what makes what you love what you do. Exactly. But other thing too, when you look at it from a nonprofit standpoint, the nonprofits they're in the communities, and the consumers trust the nonprofits. The nonprofits just has to have the ability to do scale, and when you do that, now you're talking about um, repositioning a community. So a community has a lot of blight. Now you're able to go in and acquire these properties, rehab them, and put people who really want to live in those communities in a very decent home. Now your tax base goes up. Crime goes down because now you have an opportunity to just revamp a community. And that's the, I think that's the thing that gives us the most hope that we can take this project and introduce this project to so many more nonprofits so they can uh, continue their mission. I'm going to ask a question that kind of popped up in my head as you guys were talking, and it's not meant to be a a 60 minutes type question. I want you to answer it in case it's popping up on anybody else's head that's listening to this interview. When we talk about real estate, one of the topics that has to be brought up is risk. Um, Real estate is an investment just like any other investment, and there's risk tied to it. I've been sitting here thinking, is there any risk or is the risk being taken? The risk was taken by the bank because they're holding the property, so once they release it, uh, is there any risk at any point? I mean, or uh, let me just ask it: What is the risk to who in, in this in this procedure? Wow, another good question. I tell you, he's he is securing his position with you. Mike. Wow, That's are, a are, second you, are you like feeding him money under the table right now? What's going on here? He's, he's feeding me good. Actually, it's Don feeding me good questions under the table. That's Robin, serious. you're not hired apparently. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Well, that's part of the process we offer to the nonprofit. We do due diligence before we will purchase the property because we don't want them upside down in it. So that question is very, very viable. But that's the key to our success. You don't just leave them out there exactly. hanging. You're no. going to help. You know the procedures. You know what's going on. You know real estate, and you can help them. Exactly. Obviously, with your, both of your backgrounds, that's, that's what helps. That's what we do first. And then we'll tell them we won't buy the property because we feel like it'll put them in an upside-down situation. So as Mike said to, uh, to Marjorie at the end of her interview, Everybody listening, all the for-profit companies, the non-for-profits, the, the banks that you guys meet, they all need to say, I'm in. Agreed, Absolutely. Mike? I mean, how big can this thing get? <laughs> well, you know, we have capacity to do 1,000 properties a month, so it can get big. And I'm thinking there's going to be other, you know, other companies that will start doing what you're doing because of the success you're having. Right. Probably not as good as you guys do it. No. no of course. No. But you'll always, no but matter what, what, you'll always be the first. Right. Well, as Robin said, we'll take a consultant fee. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> For those folks that want to find out more about your company and what you guys do, support your great work, or maybe a nonprofit out there that would like to have a conversation with you, where can they find all this great information? Well, they can go into our website, which is www.msquareassetservices. M Square is with a M with a small two. Well, I'll just say two. Asset Services. <laughs> where's, where's that small two on my keyboard? <laughs> Exactly. It's next, to the, it's just, next to the any key. Just2.com. Uh, so let me repeat that. M-M- <laughs> www.msquarem2assetservices.com. Then you can email me at don at 
M2 Asset Services.com. For anybody that may be messed up or whatever, and didn't get that, if, if you're on the website right now and you're listening to the podcast, there is going to be a link from, from this page that you're on right now to their website. Absolutely. And then we're going to have Robin do a voiceover on their website to make sure everybody understands the squared and the two and all that. Good I stuff. want to call M squared and in here you, you know, thank you for calling M squared, but I want it to be Robin's voice. Absolutely. See, we're we're getting Robin some business now. I Absolutely. like M squared. I like that. That's good. So and uh, and and then we'll sign the deal at the eighteen eighteen club. Apparently, <laughs> we're we're. Yeah, we're going to be having lunch there soon. That's right. Um, all right, want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, Lonnie and Don, always a pleasure. Look forward to uh, seeing you guys uh, more. Uh, stay in touch and, uh, uh, you know, keep up the great work. Thank well, you. thank you for the opportunity. All right, Don Maxwell and Lonnie Allen, the uh, managing partners with M Squared Asset Services here on Gwinnett Business Radio. Any other business we need to take care of before we sign off, Stephen? Uh, no, I call for the question and move to adjourn the meeting. All right. In that case, a reminder that uh, all of our folks can enjoy this program or any of our other Gwinnett Business Radio programs anytime, day or night, 24-7 by going to GwinnettBusinessRadio.BusinessRadioX.com. You can also download any of these programs on iTunes. Be sure to follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. We're at Gwinnett Radio X. You can now check out our new YouTube channel, uh, Business Radio X uh, dash Gwinnett as well. For our producers, uh, Trey Odom and Z or Laz. Yeah. <laughs> Who's now going to be very famous. L Laz, tell us your whole name. Lazar as well. You, you paused because you weren't exactly sure. Oh, how I've to never. Say that's it. why I call him Z and Laz. Uh, Lazar. I never get Lazarus. I never get it right. Uh, for all those guys, and for you, Stephen, any parting words? Yes, I am so glad that yet another week has gone by and I'm not fired. I went from being fired to getting a couple of great questions. I saved my job by the skin of my teeth. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. Okay, sorry. All right, I'll see you at the 1818 Club. Absolutely. Till next time, Mike Salmon. We'll see you next time right here on Gwinnett Business Radio. Thank you.